few more seconds, uh, Prashad. I think you know still people are joining. Sure, Mahir. The moment you say go ahead, we will start. Yep. Thank you. All right, Prasad, I think you know we can get started. We have at least 50% uh, of the team here. Okay, Mahesh, so shall we get started? Yeah, we can. Okay, I'll just share my screen. Um, once everybody sees my screen, we'll start. Shared my screen. Please let me know once uh, you are able to see it. Yeah, we can see that. Bangalore. Yes, Mahir, you can see. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Thanks, Ravi. Okay. So, hi everyone. Uh, welcome to the overview session of automated testing in Pegasus platform. I am Prasad. I take care of uh, test automation area in platform, uh, and uh, I work closely with the Transformers Scrum team who has implemented this framework and uh, maintaining it. So today I have uh, Mahathir Lata and Prasanna joined um, in this overview session uh, who are from the Transformers Scrum team. They'll just greet you. Hi everyone. So what are we going to cover today? We'll just briefly touch upon the background and history behind this framework. Why did we develop this? What is the intention behind it? And then we will give a functional overview of uh, this Pega unit framework. And what are the capabilities? What are the uh, advantages of it? Why do you know to use it? And various features associated to it, etc. Uh, followed by a demo by Madhvi explaining how to create test cases for a few of the important rule types. And then the support information. And last few minutes, we will use it for any question and answers from the uh, members. This is the agenda for today's overview session. What is the background for this framework? Basically, you all uh, have been on Pegasus platform for quite a few years, but you must have faced the problem of testing. Uh, or, uh, we never had a support for testing inbuilt in Pegasus platform. Uh, so whenever customers had to ask, um, how do I test my applications which were built on top of Pegasus platform, or what is the quality of my application, how should I measure, how should I test all these things, basically the flows, cases, decision rules, UI, all these things, I am able to build using your platform, but I am not able to test them using your platform. So how should I um, do it, etc. For which we did not have an answer. Now we have been asking them to do it either manually or use external tools, so which was not good enough. So people were not very happy that we are not able to provide the support for testing applications. So we had to address that issue. To address that issue, we had developed one framework earlier. It was quite some time ago, um, probably around five of Pega, I believe. Uh, so we had a framework called AUT, which was Automated Unit Testing. And it was made licensed product on top of Pega license. So customers who wanted to test using Pega uh, 7 platform, so they had to buy this separately. And it has addressed some of the concerns which was raised by customers, like some of the rules, important rules like flow, activity, decision rules were automated um, and people were able to use it. But there were some drawbacks with this uh, framework because mainly it works with the approach that you can record a run and play back whenever you want. So it did not have anything else apart from this. So if I am running a tool, I'll just record the way I ran it and I will play it later. That's all. It, it just works like a wind runner or any other recording and playback tool. So um, that was not quite efficient because it did not have any setup or cleanup context. So if I want to set up any data prerequisite uh, to my test case, I will not be able to do. And similarly, if my rule creates any objects or any information on the clipboard or in the system, I will not be able to clean it using the test case itself. 
so which was a quite uh, quite a big drawback and also uh, i don't have the luxury of uh, verifying various things when i test using my test case so it's just, because it's just a uh, record and playback thing whether there are, the ran went fine or not that's the only thing which i could verify if i want to verify a few other things like whether these data objects were present or not or whether this data matches some other data or etc i will not be able to do that and and on top of all these things it was very hard to maintain the test cases because we will not be able to edit the test cases which were recorded using the old framework so if the functionality changes or in case if i want to change the data of the test case i will not be able to do that i have to delete the old test cases and uh, recreate the new ones so the maintenance part was Uh, very difficult with the old framework, and uh, and of course it had plenty of issues with the browser compatibility. It mainly worked with IE IE version, but not with any other browsers. So it was another major drawback with uh, the old framework. So keeping all these issues in mind, um, we had to come up with a more enhanced and uh, much more capable framework, uh, which people can really use. People have been using our old framework. Even now, people are using it, but it was not solving the purpose. so what are the purpose which we are really expecting our framework to solve what are the real business cases one is we want to offer a product um, without any license which is free of cost you are providing a development platform why should i pay for your testing platform so it should be free of cost for me so it is the out of the box support to test all your rules any applications built on pega 7 platform and this framework should help you to do your feature testing also um, when you are uh, developing stories in your sprints you should be able to test them there itself at the end of sprint at the end of a page you want to measure the quality you create test cases run them any any number of times you want and keep all those test cases for future use for any regression testing purpose in case if you change anything in future you will be able to use all these test cases for regression testing purpose if you take a typical um, testing pyramid which is given in the right side the ui part industry standard is that you should have around 5 to 10% of your total tests related to ui and 15 to 20% of your tests related to service or integration and 70 to 80% of your test cases should belong to ui um, testing capabilities why that is because uh, all your ui and service tests would take much longer time to run and they are very difficult to maintain as well because the ui aspects keep changing and and um, and it's very not very easy to maintain all these tests you will have to spend a lot of time so uh, but unit tests on the contradict they are very fast uh, they will verify all the units um, in 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 no matter of time so um, you get great confidence when when all your unit tests pass and in the end when during the acceptance phase or during your integration phase you keep some tests to make sure that ui works fine so that's the pyramid if you if you see uh the customers are the internal pega people itself they have been using outsourcing tools like selenium telerik and rspecs to do their ui testing and the pega api the rest services provided by pega api and write scenarios in any framework which they want to write various uh, scenario driven test cases and i think some of the teams are using jnits but because it is this platform is aimed at application developers who may, may not be very technical we cannot ask them to jnits to do their unit testing so not many people are really using jnit for writing unit tests very few people who are technical have been doing this so because of this reason the portion of unit test coverage has been pretty low uh, whoever has been using seven applications this is the main intention behind coming up with this framework so if you see that inclusion of pega unit um, uh, for the unit sub unit testing capabilities should greatly solve this purpose that was the main motive behind this and this framework is very intuitive um the designing and running and viewing results with this framework has been pretty easy it's very user friendly anybody who is not technical also can create tests and run them without any knowledge of any technical things and another main aim of this is to support the devops concept the ci cd pipeline basically so when you when you check in your code you would expect some tests to automatically run as part of your validation engine Uh, right now only jnits and aspects or whatever tests you are creating um, are only integrated so only you can verify them but with the introduction of pega units you should be able to integrate these pega unit test cases also to your validation engine or probably before your deployment at an acceptance test phase also you can verify all your integration pega unit test cases so it should support even that so the, these are some major um, uh, aims behind coming up with an enhanced framework which should replace aut
Am I going too fast or uh, am I audible properly? Pretty clear uh, audio voice side, uh, Prashad. Okay, so if if anyone has any doubts or uh, did not understand anything, don't hesitate to stop me. Any point and can ask anything. Team, so any we'll questions here? Sorry, somebody said something. Yeah, I was asking any questions here. Okay. No, I, I think probably I'll get started with this. So, uh, is this being used by any other team here, PMF or customer service or any other teams in PEGA? Yes, Mahi. Uh, PMF teams, two teams have been actively using this already. They are, they are given quite a feedback and uh, we have addressed a lot of issues raised by them also. Okay. They have used it for um, automating their activities and databases basically. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Financial services frameworks are also already using it. Sure. I think you know who was that. In CLM, we are using data pages alone, uh, Mahi. We Fantastic. need to start with uh, other rule types. Thanks, Navi. Hey, Prasad, uh, I have a question. Yeah. Um. Uh, now, do you have um, any plans uh, to extend uh, the unit test cases even to the regression testing, you know, functional regression testing, right? Uh, because typically, you know, we, we have uh, regression test cases in, in place already. Now, uh, if um, uh, we start building uh, automation unit test cases, how these can be extended and leveraged and integrated along with the regression test cases so that, you know, you, you, can, you can reuse and uh, um, probably uh, extend the unit test cases. Um, <clears throat> normally in any application development, if you want to do regression testing, mostly you will uh, concentrate on the functional part of the total application. Uh, some Either some portion or full, full of the application functionality. So um, currently with the UI uh, tools like Selenium Telric, you must be writing your acceptance or functional level test cases. Um, whereas with the unit, as of now, we are supporting rules, which means independent rules can be automated and whenever you want to do regression testing of the rules independently, you'll be able to use that. But what we want to do in future is to extend this capability to support flow rule and case type rules as well, which means you will be able to test multiple rules bundled together because flow is all about having many steps, many stages involving many rules within that. So when you really automate flow rule, which means you have automated your whatever scenario basically, a partial application or probably the full application, which is a case type. So when that capability is available, you will be able to create acceptance level test cases as well and make them part of your regression testing. Okay. And uh, part of 7.3, it is in progress. Okay. Uh, but but there would be different in the uh, technology stack here, right? So how that would be uh, overcome? Because, you know, we are talking about um, Pega framework uh, where we're writing the unit test cases and integrating those with the um, other uh, test suits, right? Telerik or Selenium or RSpec. Will there be any, you know, um, APIs that, you know, that are available? So you want uh, Pega unit tests to be executed along with your other test suits which you have in other, other tools? Uh, is that possible? I'm trying to understand, you know, uh, what extent this integration can be done. Because our intention is not to uh, provide any plugins or anything with external suits or external test cases which are created with other tools. Pro um, we want to be on our own. Um, probably if there is a demand, we will think about it later. But right now we haven't thought about that. Hmm. Pras okay. Pr Prasad uh, Raghav here. Yeah. Um, Quick question on the repository uh, uh, on uh, the way we organize the repository. Is it possible to tag my repository, uh, tag in terms of either priority or or functionality? Two, is it possible to create a bunch of uh, tests together? All the tests should be independent. Uh, um, I think you know the uh, the topic I'm talking about is test suite and then uh, configuration of test suites and prioritization of test suites in some form or the other. Yes. Um, currently, we have only independent test cases available, um, but with 7.3, we have already delivered the test suits EPIC, which means you will be able to group all related test cases together as part of a test suit, and you can use the test suit um, for your regression purpose or integrate with your CI, etc. 
prioritization of test suit is something which we have to uh, work on the next phase uh, based on the feedback we receive from the test suit functionality but you can create ad hoc test suit or probably a regression test suit or a smoke set test suit all these can be categorized uh, for your grouping of test cases that is possible with 73 got it prashad thanks okay. any other questions or can we move forward Assuming we can move forward and just uh, moving. So what do we have in Pega unit framework? How does it really work? Um, what is the functional overview of it? So to work with Pega unit framework, uh, it's it's very simple. Uh, there is no great configuration required. If you have Pega 7 platform, all you need to do is to do a little application setup. You identify a rule set in which you want to store all your automated test cases and just make a small configuration. We will show it in the demo how to do it. Um, but that's that's all you need to work with this framework. And then you pick up a rule that is already supported. You run the rule and convert the rule into a test. Whatever data you want to store for the test case should be used to run the rule. And all the data and the result, everything will be stored uh, in the form of a test case. So when you want to run this test case in future, the same rule will be run with the same input data which you have used to create the test case. And then it will compare with the data you have specified. And if it if it matches, then it will make it pass. Otherwise, it will make it fail. So you can always edit this test case. You can change the values, either input values, output values, or anything, basically description. Everything you can change. So it, it's quite user friendly. And then it provides the context to do setup and cleanup for your test case, which means in future, uh, if I want some prerequisite data to be present before this rule is run, like I want to um, uh, make few objects, uh, some few properties to have already available in the clipboard or in the system, I can use the setup section of a test case to make sure all is available. And in the cleanup section, I can clean up all the objects, the data which I have created using the setup section or probably the rule has created something. Everything can be cleaned up in the cleanup section. So it is setup first uh, gets run, then the rule gets run with the data provided, then cleanup gets run to clean everything that is uh, created as part of this test case. So when the test case runs next time, it will be fresh. So that support is there. And uh, it mostly works with the clipboard data. So if, if uh, whatever I want to verify should present on the clipboard. Uh, so either pages or objects or data, anything, whatever is present on the clipboard, you will be able to verify the data as part of your test case verification. And there are multiple assertions are supported in this framework. This is the property assertions, verifying the values against some properties or pages, basically whether the page exists, page has any errors or the result count, basically to verify whether this, this list has these many records or not. And there are a few other assertions also, which will be shown in the demo. But there are plenty of things which we can verify when you create a test case. It's not just plain record and playback. If it runs fine, it is fine kind of thing. And the test results which will be much detailed. Um, if a test case fails, you'll be able to find uh, how many assertions are failed, what is the failure reason for each of those assertions, what is expected value, actual value, everything is very detailedly visible in the test result section. And uh, there is a history section also. If you want to see um, when all was a test case executed, you can go back to any number of occurrences and see what the results for this test case when it ran earlier. And you can see the results of each of those occurrences separately. And there is an application level landing page provided, which will show all the test cases that were created in a, in an application. And you can select all of them or few of them and run them. And uh, for all the supported rule types, there was a test case tab included, which will also contain the test cases belonging only to that role. So these are some important features for Pega unit. And on top of all these things, another important feature which is provided which is integrating these Pega unit Prash tests. Prashad, uh, just a quick question on the setup and uh, cleanup. Yeah. Um, is it the is it the ability to set up the clipboard data and also clean up the clipboard data, or is it further into the DB space as well? No, it is mainly with the clipboard data only. Okay. Not got the DB data. You have to manually do DB entries if you want anything. Okay, got it. Thanks. Uh, also, Prasad, uh, do we have any, um, if we have a couple of test cases, can we link them to our user stories or uh, just the rule type or specific rule for now? You're asking in PMF? Yeah, in PMF. 
right now you cannot um, tag them um, we have provided an option to export the test cases you can export them to an excel and probably attach them but there is no direct link provided as of now but that feedback we have got we will be looking into that later phase okay uh, prasad the srinivas here one question uh, when we have test cases where we need to validate uh, multiple data can we integrate with any xmls or csv files for data inputs and verification validation Mm, not there. Okay. Not because we are taking the input data directly from the rule, so the integration with external files is currently not supported. Okay. Yeah. When we when we um, provide the data driven approach, uh, which which is in cards, when we want to automate uh, case type and other things, we are considering data driven approach. So probably that time um, we will think of this, but right now it's not supported. yeah example verification of clipboard data when we want to validate multiple uh, uh, data on the clipboard uh, if we have a predefined uh, excel or something csv file uh, you know if that uh, validation can case take place along with this integration i think then we need not write the multiple outputs that we are expecting something like that uh, instead of manual thing so yeah Yeah, I understand your point, um, but that that's currently not provided. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure, sure. Cases are multiple sessions basically within the test case. Okay, okay, got it. Okay. Okay, is it possible to launch um, specific rule types as the Pega unit runs? For example, I might want to run a data transform, or I might want to run a, a decision table logic and retrieve certain things. or for that matter an activity which uh, which fills the clipboard data in some form or the other is it possible to plug in calling of these rules as part of let's say setup no i think that's not possible do you have any other information on that i think yes right uh, prasad we can use activities and data transforms which are existing in the system for usage of setting up data so for setup is he asking about the setup yeah okay i didn't understand it properly but as part of setup you will be able to um, run any data page or run any activity to generate the data that is required for test case okay okay the data transform is also yeah thanks prasad sorry i didn't understand the question properly no problem any other questions Yeah, one last question maybe <clears throat> so can application as well as pega unit can run in parallel um application in the sense you want to run application meaning your cases and simultaneously your test cases yeah because both of them will uh, deal with clipboard uh, what if i change values of clipboard and then uh, application uses the same references right so no but there will be on different threads right so test case has its own thread it will maintain its own clipboard okay so they will not clash oh, okay okay so you can run an application in a separate thread you can run all your test cases in a different thread there won't be any clash got it yeah. okay so i'm just moving forward any more questions can be asked any time so one last one here uh, prasad one more yeah like the uh, rule inheritance can i in inherit uh, the underlying pega units um you can copy the existing test cases and save them as new ones but i don't know what exactly you mean inherit these test cases um okay so in 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 this part of the space um there is a dependency between application a which is on top okay uh, application uh, we have a foundation layer as a consistent one yeah so foundation layer will also have pega units Mm-hmm. going forward and then the the pega unit test base will eventually increase yeah. so we as a consuming application we consume lots of functionality from the underlying foundation yeah so is it possible to run those tests uh, by just saying include the um, the ones that are there in the uh, in the respective application yes that that's a very good point um, we have discussed on this right now if you see you have an option to select the number of applications uh, for the inheritance in the designer studio we will extend the capability for pega units as well oh that will be great then we don't have to copy all of them so we can reuse them existing exactly the same inheritance would be provided yeah. okay okay great thanks prasad 
Okay, so as I was mentioning, um, we have built a REST service through which you can integrate all these Pega units to any of the CI tools like Jenkins, Hudson or anything. So it, it's a very simple configuration. You provide the URL and it's an authenticated service. So whatever operator you are using to execute this service in the CI configuration, the application that associates it with the default access group of the operator will be picked up and all the tests belong to that application will be executed. Right now, that's the only capability that is there. So you can execute all the an application. Let's say you have two applications like application one and application two. And this REST service can call either the test of this application or the test of this application. If you want multiple application test cases to be executed, you will have to build multiple steps in your CI tool. But with the introduction of test suits, we have enhanced this REST service to call a particular test suit. So the test suit can contain a subset of your total application test cases and you will be able to execute only those tests. So that's about uh, integration with CI tools. The test suit concept will come in 7.3. So the enhancement to the REST service also will be part of 7.3. But currently, it will execute tests related to any application uh, from the CI. That will also be demoed by Mafi in a few minutes. So Prasad, uh, Sheikh here. When you say application 1 and application 2, uh, are you talking about uh, application which are in inheritance, like you know base layer, foundation layer, and then application layer? Or uh, you have foundation layer and two different applications referring to foundation layer? It's only the topmost layer. It's independent. Like if you, if you have used your operator, let's say, and you are tied to an access group, and that access group will be linked to one default application. So without any inheritance, it will pick the test cases only from that application. Okay. Because the inheritance capability is not yet provided. So when we build the inheritance capability, we will also mention whether you want to pick all the tests from the underlying applications or foundation applications also or from any different application. Okay, so by this then register is called two application, two different applications simultaneously. That is how they execute. Yes, you have to build two different build steps in Jenkins. One to execute all tests in application one, second step to execute all tests in application two. Two times uh, the rest service needs to be called. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you, Professor. So moving forward. So where are we currently with respect to Pega unit? Um, what is already delivered? What is in pipeline? Uh, so if you see the supported role types, we have database available in 718. And activity, data transform, decision table, and decision tree. These are available starting 722, which means they are available right now for people to consume. And integration with CI is already available. It's an authenticated REST service. As I explained, it will execute all the tests in the application. With 7.3, we will enhance it further. And upcoming for 7.3 is test suits and automation of flow and case types. Case type is tended to, but flow is currently in progress. Test suits is already delivered as part of 7.3. This is the state currently we are in, and we are taking feedback from various teams. Like just now, you have given a couple of feedback. Uh, similarly, whoever has been practicing, they have been giving us the feedback, and this mainly runs by delivering the feedback we receive. So that's where the currently is. Prasad, can you go one slide back? Sorry, uh, I just slipped the whole thing. Yeah. So on this, uh, is it is it possible to distribute the tests execution uh, at runtime? Distribute the tests meaning uh, you want to execute two tests as part of one run? No, no, no. So I have two Pega 7 platforms. I have one repository. Would it be possible to execute my tests as and will on the two instances? You want to execute all the tests on two instances? Uh, not as a single set, but distribute them. It's a distribute, distributed test execution. You cannot actually uh, distribute the tests because the REST service executes all the tests. You cannot demarcate. The bal load balancing or whatever you are thinking cannot be done. When you have test suits functionality available, you can probably call one test suits from one instance, another test suit from another two, another instance. Okay, so the um, the deployment is uh, deployment of tests is at this point in time tied down to the Pega instance uh, where it is where it is residing in. Yes. Okay. Got it. Okay. Yeah, so this is where we are currently in and if there are no further questions on the overview, uh, then we can proceed with the demo part. Um, 
Any any other questions before we proceed with the demo? Hey, Prasad, this is Muthi. I have a question on the, from the previous slide. So we have uh, test cases defined for the data pages in the earlier versions. Yes. And uh, is there any compatibility issues or will it work as is on the 7.2.2 and uh, in the upcoming releases? No compatibility issues. What okay. Earlier it, will work as it should work as is. Yes. Okay, great. Thanks. Because with all new versions, uh, team is making sure that the earlier functionality is working fine. Yep, yeah, thank you. Any more questions, anyone? Are you good to proceed with the demo? Yes, Prasad. I think you know, we have 30 minutes more. Yep. So I think we should definitely get into demo. Okay. Thank you. Thank you also for participants, very active participation. Okay, so this is the Designer Studio screen, um, much familiar to all of you. So where do I see my test cases? What is the landing page? So if you go to application and automated testing, you can see a tab test cases. If you click on that, you will be able to see all the test cases you have defined for this application. So the fields which you can see are the test case name, the rule type against which this test case is defined, and the rule name, what is the rule name under this rule type, and the class of it, when did it last run, what was the last run result, what was the history of this uh, uh, test case itself. So, and uh, this landing page provides filters also, which means if I want to execute all the database test cases in my application, I can filter based on the rule type, I can select data page and uh, apply. It will throw me all the database applications. If I want to run any particular rule under data page, I can again filter on the rule name. I can select the particular rule and use this select all and say run selected. So it will show progress bar and it will run. So this is uh, uh, something which you are working on. The moment you run after selecting all the things, uh, the filters are getting removed. This we are trying to address in 7.3. But for now, you have to do that step again to see the results. So if you see about a minute ago, so these were the results. You can actually click on any of the uh, status and see why it has failed. So this is the property, the comparator, expected value and actual value is shown in red because there is a mismatch. It is actually uh, failing. Similarly, if you want to see the history of this uh, particular test case, it was run only once. So if it has been run multiple times, you will see multiple instances. You click on any of the instance to see the results of that particular instance. So that's also possible. And along with this landing page, if you go to any supported rule type, uh, go to that rule and you can see a test case tab where you will see all the test cases that are defined only for this particular rule. So here also the same functionality is provided. You can select the number of test cases, run them. And the additional feature at this place is that you can add a new test case from this page because you are already into that rule context. So if you say add new, then it knows for which rule you want to add a test case. So it automatically tries to run that rule and then you'll be able to convert that rule into a test case. So these are the few navigation things which you need to know if you want to work with this framework. Just a question, uh, Prasad. Yeah. Um, is it possible to delink the test cases as we ship the application? Because um, obviously we don't want to ship the test cases as we ship the application. For example, this particular data page when I want to ship, mm -hmm. I want to strip down all the test cases and all the test histories that go along with this test case because customers are not too much interested about the test results or the test cases. Is it possible to strip it? Yes, yes. actually you need to store all your test cases as part of a uh, unique uh, rule set so that you don't ship that rule set when you are packaging. Um, but if you accidentally uh, mark um, a rule set which is used to store your regular rules to store test cases also, then it is impossible to uh, separate them at a later stage. So it's a guideline. We don't have a hard uh, validation, but it is always advisable to store them in a different rule set. Uh, we have a setting on the yeah. 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 So the setting will not be able to run. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah, so you were... Sorry, I didn't hear that. Can you say that again? I heard what you said, Prasad, but not the other one. Yeah, 
So all your application rule sets where you are building your application, those rule sets will not have the uh, test case setting capability. So as a best practice, we advise you to have a separate rule set for storing the test cases and uh, enable the setting to store test cases in that rule set only. So that accidentally also you won't be able to save the test cases in other rule sets. And while shipping, we ship only the rule sets of uh, the application, not the test rule set. Got it. Um, a related question there. Uh, what we do in the development practice here is uh, for every sprint, we have a version associated to it in a particular rule set. So if it is a sprint one, we will say 21, sprint two, 23, 22, and further and further. As we end the uh, project, we'll do a skimming and uh, we will do the skimming to a version which we want to make it available to the customer in the version that we want to ship. Given this setup, what I think I need to do <coughs> is to create one version across the sprints. Is that what you're suggesting? Not one version, a separate rule set itself. Completely different rule set. Yes, and add it to your application. Okay. A separate rule set as uh, test rule set. Ah, okay. Oh, great. Yeah, thank, yeah, yeah, thanks. Thank you. So I'll hand this over to Madhvi uh, to take care of the demo part. Uh, and she will show uh, how to create test cases for three different rule types. And, and uh, yeah, you can ask, uh, have the same uh, questions, whatever you have. Some, Prasad, one more on the, this one. The, is there a summarized view of this? Summarized view meaning for the test, test results? There are, there are five tests and uh, out of five there are three 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 uh, two failed and uh, so two passed and one failed yeah yeah i understand actually there's no summarized view for the application level but when we provide test suits for each test suit you have a summarized view okay okay got it also uh, i think uh Raga, i think once we get these results in jenkins yeah it has its own capabilities on reporting yes, yes. yeah yes <clears throat> Uh, can you schedule yep, the test it. cases? Not from Design Studio, but from Jenkins, you can schedule. Uh, are, are there any plans to do it from Design Studio? Yeah, as part well of second phase of test suits, we'll be providing uh, test suit scheduling uh, facilities. Okay, thanks. Okay, we are good to go with the test case creation part. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Madhvi from Transformers. So in 30 minutes, we'll be showing you how to create, uh, uh, how to automate your rules using Pega units. So let's get into the demo. Uh, as said by Prasad, we initially started with data page automation. So uh, let's get into that. But before that, I'll be showing you how to create a dedicated rule set and store your test case. So this is one of the PMF application which I'm using for this demo. So for PMF application, what we did is like we created a separate rule set as such to store our test cases. So at the level, under the category, you have this option, test automation settings. Once you check this option, you will be able to save your test cases. Without checking this, we will not be able to save the test case to any other rule set. So it is recommended to have a dedicated rule set every time. So that to avoid uh, shipping of test cases into production rule sets. So let's get into see how uh, to automate a data page rule. So I have taken a PMF real time data page, D underscore releases. This data page, what it does like, it is a parameterized data page which accepts uh, product ID as an input and fetches a list of releases associated to that product. So here, uh, let me run this. So here it is asking product ID. I'm just giving some product ID type of one. So I know there are a couple of releases associated to this product. So let's see how it run works. If you see, uh, for this product, I have a couple of release. Uh, PX result count is two. And I have a couple of re releases associated to it. Release two as well as in PX results two also I have release one. So if the concerned developer feels this is a desired output for which he want to automate and run at a regular basis, he can create a test case for this. On click of convert to test, the default test case create harness gets opened. 
and if you see by default in the left window actual results will be showing the entire run results what we have seen in the run window all the scalar properties the embedded pages along with the embedded properties all will be shown what all we have seen in the run window so user would be able to add these properties uh, on on what he want to assert and just by clicking on add icon that will be getting added to the so here i'm interested in couple of properties let me try to add them so px results under px results i have two results one and two so under px results of one i'm interested to add py id as well as py label so if you see these are added to my test case property accession card so what exactly here i'm asserting for is like i'm making sure that whenever my test case runs always under px results of 1 my py id should be equal to list 2 and similarly for py label so if there is any change in the order or if there is any in the results my test has to be failed that is what i am asserting for here let me add few other properties also so click of uh, this link this gets um, the, the previous will be shown under px results 2 also i'm adding other properties py id and as py label so if you see in the right pane under px results of 1 this get added and under px results of 2 i have added these two properties and similarly user can add other properties as well based on the requirement so on click of done these gets added to my test case rule form under the property assertions and if you see by default whenever a test case is getting created it gets created with a default test case id and it is unique and with some default label as such and along with some default description basing on the parameters what user has used user can edit it at any point of time and also we are showing the tested rule the rule under test information here in this case the d underscore releases and the corresponding class of it and the respective parameters on which it was run so at a later point of time if user opens a test case he would be able to for which this test has been created for for which rule has automated this test and the data page test cases and other things we are showing the default expected runtime card this is something like if user is uh, uh, want to assert the performance of any data page for example if you want to assert how much time it is taking to load the data page then he can use this type of an assertion if you see uh, it has been pointed out to point 2266 which is like this is a time which it took to load the data page for this for this run and if there is any change also that will not fail the test that's what is the help note mentioned over here and this is a default uh, uh, and this is a property assertions what we are making on this test case one one question uh, this is not the test execution time isn't it madhavi no this is the time okay. took to load the test okay page. okay thanks user can add uh, a comment this is just for understanding purpose you can add a comment over here and you can add other assertions as well but uh, let me just run it with first default assertion so let us try to create this test and by uh, by default there are some other tabs which gets created when the test case is created i'll show you how to configure a setup and clean up for the upcoming rule type which i'll cover pages and classes and history are the default ones like for every other rule Uh, one question, Madhavi, there on the assertions, can we use out of the box pega functionality? For example, uh, contains, uh, cap case, any of them? There are some default comparators what we are showing, basing on the uh, type of the property. So, for no, okay. instance, it's already there. Uh, if something else is there, basing on the category, I mean, type rule type. So, no, what's the um, gear icon next to the value this is the typical function uh... yes yes okay thank you so i've just saved the test let me just run this this is like every other rule actions run on my run since there are no changes made at a rule under test level like this for this page or at a test case level the test has been passed and if you see this is expected time as well as the actual run time so this was the time it took to run now and this was the time what was expected over here so since there are no changes the test has been passed 
So uh, let us try to uh, verify how a check uh, fail behavior is. Madhavi, I have a question here. This is Kishore. Yeah, Kishore. Yeah, what if the uh, result is dynamic? Uh, let's say uh, uh, release two is in, uh, is in uh, PX result now, P PX result one now. But <clears throat> what if uh, this result is various? What if the uh, result is dynamic? So I'm not sure I get in one or two. Uh, I may have many. So how can I uh, assert these values in that case? In, 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 if you are not sure about the exact value, you can go with existing comparator. You just want to ensure that this property is existing. Or else, if you're not uh, very sure of the number in, the, in such case, like you can just go with release hyphen, you can mention, and whatever is the value dynamically changing, you can assert on that. So just making sure that your PYD is always starting with release dash. Can I put some regular expression in property itself? Because my value. Are you asking that your result may carry? If it is a PX results one this time and uh, it may be PX results two next time. So, yeah, it's on the um, property and the value. The property and value here we are fixing it right for result PX result one we are setting only for result two. But I'm not sure in which PX result uh, my release two will come. So in that case, how can I really uh, validate that? We, we have a other assertion type list. It actually goes list and verify your result. I'll show you that, Kishore. But sure. if you're very sure about exactly verifying the particular position of the value, then you can go with this assertion. Sure, thanks. Um, Madhvi, this is Tushar. I have an, so I had used this uh, functionality on one of my data pages. And what challenge that I face is similar. Uh, apart from the PX OBJ class, there was nothing else which was uh, generic so every time if I'm running it after some couple of days the test case will fail so I was not able to see like what to do about that I'll show you the list of session probably your uh, question get answered in that session let's see okay Madhvi before you proceed I just want to ask how do we reach this expected run time value This one, this is the time which it took initially actually. Okay. The test will not be failed for these values actually. Yeah, when the first time we are going to run the test, it calculates or just the user provides? Well, initially, when the test case gets created, it automatically calculates and showcases the value, but user can edit it if required. That's true, but how do we come to the conclusion that this particular test case or data page will take this much time? And I mean, I, I'm really from run window. We are cap. We are calculating the uh, time oh, for data page to run. Okay. Um, I have one doubt. Yeah. Can we provide the parameters uh, while running the test case from the end user? Like suppose I want to write some values from my side. So can we test them after running it? No, from a test case perspective also you can change the parameters which I'm going to show now. Okay. Thank you. So here the test has been passed now. Uh, let us uh, check the failure behavior. So just for the sake of demo purpose, I'm just making the changes at test case level but at a real time if there are any changes at the rule under test level the test case would pass or fail accordingly so here i'm changing my uh, parameters over here so what i expect is like when it test my test when my executing my test case this rule under test gets executed with these parameters but the sessions what i have made here are for product one so i expect a failure here when i run it If you see my it has been failed on click of view details we'll be showing the result for which it has been failed along with some other ruler attached information and the parameters which it took to run and if you see this is the expected value released to and but the actual value it was released by because it was run with these parameters and the sessions were made for product one since they were not matching these the all these sessions have been failed and the failed ones will be shown in red 
Hi Madhavi, I have a question. See, can we pass uh, the result of one database to another database? Result of? The result of one database, outcome of this database. I want this output, the result to be income of another database. So because if you are using multiple data pages, so I want to have the results, uh, the one data page result as input to the next data page. Yes, you can call all, all those things as part of your setup actually. Okay. Is the property yes, assertion validation uh, with respect to expected uh, versus uh, actual, is it always and or it's, it can, can I also go ahead with uh, and make it an R? between these two properties. It's always in. Okay. And let's see what all other sessions can uh, test case rule form supports. So on click of add expected result, you would be able to add other sessions. So what all other sessions we support are list, result count, and page. List is something like if you have a property, you just want to check whether the property is existing across your list or anywhere in the list. So this is what we are talking about in all instances or in any instances. So this is the selection what you have to make based on your need. Uh, so here I'll show you and in all instances. So on click of add properties, we're just adding some properties to this session. So it is the list of all the list present in that data. I'm just going with px result. By default, the first result gets open, px results one. Here I'm asserting on product ID as well as product name. So what I'm asserting here is like product ID and product name should be equal to this, these values in across all my list. For example, I have 10 list, 10 results here. This value should be equal to this throughout my 10 results. If that is there, then my test has to be passed. If not, it has to be. Similarly, if you're not sure about this is present in somewhere in PX results of one or two, then you can go with in any. So if it's present in somewhere or the other list, then your test gets passed. And even you can do a filtering on top of the list, like out of, uh, you have list of some customers, out of which are categorizing on uh, type of the customer. And you can even do a filtering over here. So similarly, we have result count assertion, like if you are asserting the count of a particular list, like always has to be this thing or uh, it should be uh, greater than this or less than this, then you can go for a result count. I'm going to results again. Similar capability filtering, you can do it here. And these are the comparatives on which you can uh, post your result count. I'm just going to select five. <clears throat> Similarly, you also have page assertion, like if you want to assert whether a particular page is existing or not in the clipboard, or it is having some errors or not, then you can go for a page session. I'll be showing you how to page in the upcoming rule type. So let us save this. Uh, yeah, Madhavi, uh, this is Anila. As one question actually. So can we give uh, multiple values here, like uh, release two we have given. Along with that, can I mention like uh, whether it should be release two or release three, comma separated values? No. It's only a single value actually. Okay. If you want to uh, change something, you can change accordingly as per the comparison. The gear icon is there. What does it do then? Uh, can you? It's a normal expression builder. Okay. You can expressions. Okay. You can give a static value or you can uh, do a property reference or you can give an expression also. Can use the pega out of the box functions also. Yes. Okay. Got it. Okay. So again, I have run my test with all these assertions. Let's see the result. Assertions, the property assertion, list assertion, what all we have made, those are also only the result count assertion has been failed because it was expecting a value of i, but what we have, the actual value was two. So only the failed ones will be shown in the result. So this is, uh, you can do an uh, automation for your data page rules. My one thing, we may run out of time. Is it okay to extend it by 10 minutes probably? 
Yeah, I think you know, if it's 10 minutes or so, I think you know it's good because you know otherwise we'll have to schedule another meeting for that. Exactly. It's better to finish now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I just move on to the next uh, rule type, this, which I took is an activity. This activity is PG generated decision tree, which uh, we are using in Pega Express in one of the functionalities, like. Uh, uh, when user is uh, there is a functionality wherein when user provides some conditions, basing on those conditions, a decision tree, tr uh, tree rule would be generated at the back end. And this parameterized activity which, define, uh, which requires some pre clipboard state as well. So let we have already automated this using our PEGA unit itself. So let's see how we have automated it. So if you see there were some some of the test cases which we have created for it to test the functionality. Let's see how we have achieved this using PEGA unit. So this is one of the tests uh, which we are verifying the main functionality of this activity, like whether the entry rule is generated at the back end or not. As I said, this is a parameterized activity which accepts all these parameters, some decision class name on which uh, which class it has to be created, the name of that rule, the label, the rule set and rule set version. So this requires all these parameters which you are passing as part of our test case. And as I said, this requires some defined clipboard state only which the rule and test case executed the activity or else the activity will not be executed. So we are achieving all those things using our setup section as part of our test case. This you can achieve it either using a data transform or a data page or an activity. Here we have tried activity. So let's see how we have configured our uh, setup activity to achieve that clipboard state. So here uh, we are creating the, uh, the entry page which is required by that, the primary page required by that activity. And we are even setting up some properties which are required. And this decision entry always gets generated with a unique ID. So we are even maintaining that as part of our setup. And we are passing that unique ID to a property, so D3 name. So that every time this, whenever we run this test also, the test case, uh, the decision entry would be generated back in with a unique ID. So this is how we are uh, doing a pre-setup kind of a thing so that the rule and a test gets executed successfully. And also have a cleanup section like wherein uh, if you set, create something, some pages on some properties as part of your setup, those all can be cleaned up as part of your test uh, test case. If something is uh, uh, done using an active uh, data page, that would be automatically taken care. The test case would take care to clean up those things. But if something is executed using a data transform or a data uh, or an activity, it's user responsibility to clean up those things. So that can be been achieved by using a data transform or an activity. Here we even configured a cleanup. So whatever the pages we are creating as part of our setup, we are making sure that we are cleaning up all those pages from the clipboard. And let's see how we have configured our test case. <coughs> So if you see, uh, everything else would remind we have so, uh, seen for data page, the rule and test information, everything. Here we are do doing a property accession. Like uh, for a data page, the context is always a page, but for an activity, it may create some other pages and all. For that reason, you create a page in class on which it wants to run. And we are asserting the PG in queue of that. Uh, like as I said, the decision tree rule would be generated at the back end. So to ensure that whether that is getting generated every time and whenever the test case has been executed, we are asserting on that property. Here we are doing this, uh, verifying that on setup page as well as if this unit is getting generated or not. And we are also asserting other properties, the class name, the name, rules or rules in which it is getting created. So uh, this assertion will help us uh, to verify whether the decision tree rule is getting generated or not. And similarly, we are doing a page session here. So these are the pages which, which gets created as part of a setup and everything. So making sure that these pages are getting created and it will not have any errors. And we are also asserting some of the embedded pages over here, whether the page is existing or not. If something setup has been failed, these pages will not be created and the test would fail. So similarly, you can go for any other assertions as I have shown you in the data page test case. For this uh, for this one, we have uh, configured the property assertion to uh, meet the functionality of the activity. Yes. Whenever a test case uh, execute, this gets uh, run on the test case thread, but the rule under test will get executed on the run record primary page.
Madhavi, quick question on the test cases itself. For example, if I have uh, one rule type uh, on top of which I can create multiple test cases, is that right? Okay. So, is there a way to uh, is there a way there is a report which says that there is a duplicate assertions uh, after a point in time? Uh, for example, we we deliver a sprint build. Uh, for one rule, we created two tests, let's say. And the next sprint, based on the functionality, we update the same uh, rule type. And we extend the test cases. Uh, instead of modifying the existing ones, we extend the test cases uh, as well. So at some point in time, the manageability of tests and the assertions for a rule type is going to be a little bit uh, cumbersome. Is there a way to say that uh, there is a duplication of assertions and all of that? There is no way as such, but it is always recommended to have update that existing test cases facing on the change. No, no, we may would not want to do that because uh, if in one particular version, because uh, for example, we might have three versions in the market and we have to support all three versions in the market. That means that the existing repository is split into three. The newer ones will, will have an updated assertions. The older ones will continue to work on the old functionality. So, uh, test case is also a rule. It can also be version. So okay. you can uh, create the rules, uh, test case also in a higher version, rule set version. Uh, okay. So your uh, uh, corresponding uh, rules. But they can exist in the same rule set. Version. Version. Basically, it's like any data transform can exist in first tool set 01 and again you enhance it and save it in 02. Similarly, test case also exists in test case rule set in 01. You can enhance it and save it in 02. Correct. So, is there a way to know the um, redundant assertions or same assertions multiple times? It's a manageability of test cases perspective. Is there a way to um, say that this no, is clean? This is test case on the test cases tab, and it's like uh, any other thing like J unit. If you have written some ten J units, uh, it is up to us to maintain the J units. Like you have to go and edit, you have to go inside them and. So there isn't them. anything. So if we duplicate additions, if there is any, I think it needs to be a manual effort. Yeah, yeah. Basically, okay. they get executed wise. Uh, if there's a, there's a duplicate assertion, the assertion would get executed wise. Got it. Thank you. Uh, hi, I have a question regarding the setup uh, set, um, for test case. To set up test case, we are using activities, right? So activities are uh, not to use because it uh, increases Gordel score. Some, so is it? Uh, you can go uh, with the data transform or a data transform. I mean, is there any way to ignore these uh, activities while preparing Gordel score? You don't consider them at all. Uh, no, uh, for guardrail score also, you can exclude the test rule set. Okay. They, they are going to be in a separate rule set, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fine. So, I'll just move on with the next rule type. So, this is how you can automate your activity rules. Uh, I'll just... Uh, show you how to automate a decision tree or a decision table. So this decision tree is again a real-time one, uh, PY work attachment select. This is used at a work object level actually when user tries to attach some file, basing on the file type, whatever he has attached, an icon would be generated. So a decision would be made basing, using this decision tree. So we have automated this. Let's see how we can automate it. So this is again uh, need some inputs p by class name and p by usage. I'm just passing the required value and p by usage. So this is the run result. So user can create a test for it, it's similar to any other rule, just by clicking on convert to test. And everything else would remain the same, the tabs, the test case ID generation, the rule and test information, the description and everything. 
And for decision tree and decision uh, table, we are just uh, showing the default decision result card. This is the default decision what we are showing here. And along with that, we are extracting all the properties which are present in the uh, rule under test here, along with the written result. So this is the written result which we have seen in the run window. And these were the properties which were present in the decision tree. So we are extracting all those properties along with the values entered by the user. So here for a decision tree or a decision table, a user can uh, do with two things. So user can run that rule with multiple input, multiple input combination, or you can user can uh, make any other assertions like any other test case rule. For example, for an activity, how we have done with crop attend page assertion, those assertions you can use and user can make using an added result, or user can go with multiple input combinations. So let me just try to create and run with one combination first of all. Um, I'll just run it. The test would pass means there are since there are no changes at a rule under test level or at a test case level, and this is the time it took to run. So let me change it. So I'm just changing some uh, values over here just for the sake of demo. I'll just try to run it. <coughs> if you see, my test has been failed. The reason being. This was expecting, this was the image, mspowerpoint.png was the image it was expecting, but this was the actual result which it got. So that's the reason it has been failed. So what happened at the backend is like, whenever a test case gets executed, the rule under test with the given input combination will be executed. Here in this case, we have one. So the rule under test got executed with this input combination and this was the result it was expecting. So let's try some other form the decision tree on which it has to run. So if you see, I have given two input combinations. Either user can give multiple combinations in the test case, or if required, user can create multiple test cases based on the requirement. So let me just run this. You see, my result has been failed. So what happened now is like the rule and the test has been executed twice. So this has been executed one with this combination, and this was the result which it was expecting. And this has been executed again with this input combination, and this was the expected result. In both the uh, in both the things, it has been failed. So whatever has been failed, that will be shown in the result, like in every other result. Only the failed ones will be. So similarly, user can add as many combinations based on the requirement, or user can go with adding multiple uh, assertions to the test case rule form. But both cannot happen at the same time. Either user can go with multiple input combinations or adding multiple assertions to the test case rule form. Uh, we question on the uh, on the on the rule on which the test case gets executed. Is it possible to? S say on which version I want to ex run this test on? Uh, the rule under test always it gets picked up, the rule resolved one. Which is uh, the highest one. Yes. Yeah. Um, so my earlier test runs which are uh, for the earlier functionality uh, would mismatch. Mismatch in what See, there is there is always an association to the rule and the test case, the rule in its own form and the test case in the corresponding form. And the rule has been modified because we changed functionality, we added a bug fix and all of that, and this increased in terms of num in terms of version. Every time you fix the same version, the, the there is an inconsistency to the rule form because it has it has a bug fix or it has a functionality. But the test case uh, is run. Uh, we, we, is expected to run on the latest uh, rule form. Yeah, that is how we do the regression, right? Yeah. So if you are enhancing the rules, then you would want the test case to still succeed. So you would want your test case to run on the latest one only. If there is any change to the rule, as you said, there is a bug fix or anything done. Then obviously, if you want the functionality to be verified, you have to either modify the existing test case ones for the new version. Otherwise, your old test cases will run on the new functionality also as part of your regression testing. Yeah. 
That's how we expect all that. No, so that, way, that would eventually mean, uh, Prasad, we need to have uh, one version in one instance and the older versions in the older instances. No, why? Because we, no, as I said, the functionality we need to con continue to maintain. That's why you have a separate homepage version. Okay, so you're saying also. change that as well. Right. All right, got it. Yeah. Thanks. Yes, yes. So continuation uh, to that question, this is Kishore. So what if uh, I have multiple customers with different versions? So uh, one customer is on, uh, let's say 10 version, other customer is on 20 version. And uh, if I wanted to run my tests on uh, uh, not 20, the uh, latest one, I wanted to run it on 10. In that case, I have to have test cases with the both, uh, both the rule sets or uh, can I run it on a specific uh, rule set? So basically, it, it's the same answer. Is the so basically, like the way you maintain mer versioning for your rules, uh, similarly maintain versioning for test cases also. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, got you. And the other question uh, I have um, is, um, what if a rule uh, is depre uh, deprecated and uh, uh, I have test cases associated to it? So. Uh, Will they work as it is, or they will work as it is? Okay, so a rule is marked as deprecated, and that has test cases will uh, will execute. Um, so that won't give any problem. So a, a quick time check, guys. It's we are already it's uh, four fifteen. So if there yeah, are questions, I because think you know, can we still should open take it the rule and at mesh, yeah. right? Yeah. Would that be fine? Sure. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. So Prasad and Shirisha, uh, do you think you know uh, we covered everything we we wanted to? We are just planning to show how to configure from Jenkins as well. Okay. Uh, I mean, like, you know, because you know, we are off out of the time. You know, can we do a short video or something which you can post on Mesh and can be shared with the team? Just be two minutes. Uh, maybe we can finish that, and I think then we can. Okay. All right. Fantastic. Yep. Yeah. So uh, as said, uh, we can configure it from any other continuous integration tool like Jenkins. Here we have configured it from Jenkins. Here we just created it, and this is how we have to configure. It. So Hi, we can't see your screen. You can't see the screen? Yeah, we lost you. Try to share it again. Are you able to see now? It's coming up. Just give a second. Yeah, you can see that. Okay, sorry about that. So this is the rest which we have exposed. PG execute tests like any other rest service, which you can configure from any other continuous integration tool like Jenkins. So this is how uh, it works. So the default access group for which uh, it is there, placing on that, the test present in that application will be considered. And the credential will be continued to the So if there are any values in this format, uh, the rule, the test case ID, what a session has been failed, how we are seeing in the test case result, the similar result can be seen from here as well. So that's about the demo, uh, Mahi. So finally what we want to say is that um, when is anything, basically we will... Uh, your voice is you, breaking, Prasad. Uh, want to know about automated testing. Um, okay, how about now? Let, yeah, a little better, yeah. 
Okay, so uh, for support purpose, we will share a, a mesh link where you can find the details of all automated rule types and um, the functionality, videos, the limitations, um, all those things can be uh, um, seen from this link. And transform a team, uh, the Scrum Master is from Krishna Dawalji and he can, uh, probably the team can be approached in case of any doubts. And there is a mesh link again for Pega unit feedback tracking. You can go through the feedback which we received from various people. You can also log, probably will give access to some people. Uh, or you can send over mail and we will record it in this page so that you can. Okay, I mean, like, given the uh, size of the audience, can you open a mesh page where people can post push questions? Specific to IAD? No, not just IAD. No, just, you know, PEG IAD, you know. where, you know, people can ask questions. Yeah, yeah, we will open it. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, uh, thank you. It was a wonderful session, Prasad. Uh, thank you, Madhavi, too. Uh, thanks, participants. I think, you know, it was a very active participation. So thanks for your time and participation. Thanks, everyone. Thank you all. Thanks, Prasad. Hope you all will visit and give us feedback. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.